Welcome back to my story, Stanley's story, a story, I can tell you that much. So yeah, good to see you all again. Uh, so yeah, sorry again for, uh, I know the schedule said we were going to be doing the SciTube, but I was like, you know what, this game's living run free in my head, I want to finish it first. Or at least try to finish it first, so. Yeah. Welcome to Woozle, uh, thank you for that, thank you for both of those, uh, wow, uh, Okay, posture check, straighten up, hydrate, sipping, stretching, <laughs> there we go, alright. So yeah, when we last left, uh, I already got quite a bit of the new content out of the way, so uh, gonna be a lot of sort of repeat material if you played the original version of this game, repeat material for me, because like I said last time, I did play the original version, so... Not going to be quite as much surprises. I don't know if we'll completely 100% the game. I will try my damnedest too. But you never know. Uh, very secretive game. You never know what uh, what they have in store. Anyways, I should probably actually launch the game, shouldn't I? Tends to be helpful. Fine and dandy, I'm glad to have you here anyways. What matters is that you are here. And there we go, it's on. Opening credits. Uh, kind of surprised they were making me do this again, but... Sure. This is a... I believe I did this... Off-stream last time, but... Okay, that's new. Sure, what have you got to say, Mr. Black Screen? Actually, Senator McFly. Well, uh, you're welcome. I don't know what relevance it has, but. We haven't set up. <laughs> wow, way to call me out. That's what I think about. Uh, that's what I think about computers. You don't gotta synchronize clocks. Although, as I say that, I have two of the fucking old-style battery clocks that I have to reset every time. One of which is actually in such a remote part of my room that I don't even bother switching it for daylight savings anymore. Last daylight savings time, it just saved where it was. Anyways. Yeah, sure thing. I know you appreciate it. Care. Of course I care about the game, it's a good game. Yep. <laughs> I don't know why you're admitting that, but sure. <laughs> okay, what's the deal? So this is my favorite time. Well, I hope he's ready for it to be 6.16pm. You got it. Anyways, sure. Let me play the game, Mr. Man. Yep. So, surprise. We weren't playing Stanley, uh... We weren't playing Stanley Ultra Deluxe at all. We're playing Stanley Parable 2. Those of you who weren't here for last year are going to be very confused, but that's on you. Assuming you haven't played this yourself, in which case, why are you even watching this? Anyways. Back to business. Another run. Come on, let me in. There we go. We don't gotta watch the intro, you know how this begins. We are Stanley. Okay, that's alright. It didn't remember my controls. What's this WASD shit? We're supposed to be... Okay, it said. That's incredibly bizarre. It said it remembered my keys, but... Okay, fixed. That was fucking weird. Probably not a good sign, but whatever. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Here we go again. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Huh. 
I missed this uh, last run uh, yesterday. Funny. Figurine Finders Committee. So for those of you who missed it, that's the big thing about the secret world. That and Mr. Bucket. Stanley picked up the bucket and smiled. Yes. He'd never be alone again. Not truly alone. Not with the bucket around. My beloved Bucket John. I missed you while I wasn't playing this. Stanley clung the bucket to his cheek. Could his co-workers really all be gone? Yeah, let's uh, go out and take a breather, Bucket Sean. Come on. Yes, whispered the bucket into Stanley's ear. We've done it. Exactly. We've escaped from that dull office and that pesky narrator. At last, out here in the white void, we are alone. Now, and yes. for the first time, I can reveal to you my true self. Ooh. The bucket began to tell Stanley of its life and its history, of the countless wars it witnessed desecrating the land and lives of untold numbers of innocent humans, and the bucket's own complicity therein. What? Of sadness and regret, and the many years it spent dwelling on the actions it might have taken to curb the madness and the decay, if only it had been stronger. Of hope and redemption. That's not and the direction I thought we were to going. to the stock of life for the common man, to manifest justice where none existed, and the bittersweet reality of time, to see one's dreams and wishes met halfway, meted out in parcels like charity, and abandoned as soon as the warm glow of inspiration begins to dim. Uh, the opportunities to do so much more. There was so much it could have done, perhaps, the bucket wondered to itself. Perhaps, if it had seen its own darkness with a clearer perception. This was way too much for Stanley. What are you talking about? He screamed. You're a bucket? To this, the bucket furrowed its brow. <laughs> no, said the bucket. Not since the evil wizard Gambhorata first ensnared me what? in his machinations as payback for uh. the secret amulet I stole from his treasured vault. I was young back then and could not conceive the ramification. No! Stanley screamed even louder. <laughs> Impressive. This is stupid! You are a bucket! This is so stupid! I don't know, man. I've seen stranger things happen in my home kingdom. <laughs> As Stanley screamed and screamed and screamed, the bucket revealed its true form, transforming into a mighty beast of untold power, its fangs glistening like... Okay, uh... My god, Stanley, you did it. You what? saved us from the bucket. Thank god you already had uh, all 12 emblems of sages and knew the what? incantations to summon their true power. Otherwise, what did you do to my bucket, Sean? By the bucket's power, I'm speechless. You've demonstrated such That's... bravery here no. today. Come, no. let's restart the game. Yes. We'll agree to never again go trifling with this bucket, nor the dark magic cast away inside of it. Yes to the reset. No to the leave the bucket alone. You can't just murder my bucket and expect it to be fucking cool with that, dude. All of his co-workers were gone. Yeah, yeah, shut up, I give a fuck. Stanley decided to oh, get a bucket back. Room. Yes. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. The good old bucket. Yes. Yes. Get Stanley and the bucket off on another thrilling adventure together. Exactly. Me and my bucket. That's right. Ah, uh, bucket Sean, how can I have ever live without you? The slander, the nerve of this man. Saying such slandering things, slanderous things about you, assuming calling it a Dark boys are shit. Stanley clutched the bucket Witch, I suppose. to his chest and entered the door on his left. You murdered my bucket, dude. I'm not obeying you. We're going to the right. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. Exactly. And here yes. it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this better than the meeting room? I'd say yes, so. Stanley thought to himself. Yes, perhaps it truly was. Yes. How insightful the bucket turned out to be. Yeah, we're gonna hang out a second because speaking of things that are blue, uh, who here is excited to hear my new song at the end of the stream? Believe you me, Dream. it's going Being to be. Being here with the bucket was a grand adventure. Yes. Stanley reflected on all they'd been through together. First, walking through the door on the right, then walking to the lounge, then arriving at the lounge. What a thrilling journey the bucket had inspired. Damn right. But you're right, it's time to move on. No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. No, she was right. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, I didn't. 
We're moving forward. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Go there. Go to the cargo lift. Uh, not exactly. I have another idea. Also, pardon the skips. Uh, ex okay, that's new. Look at that. A figurine. I'll be taking that. Okay, careful platforming. I don't exactly a master of first person platforming, but they're nice and easy. This ain't no Kaizo shit. That's mine. I'm going back to the name of these little Stanley figurines, and now I'm torn between Stanlerines and Figlies. What do you think, Stanley? What name better encapsulates the intrinsic sense of happiness that you get from seeing a small number in the corner of your screen go up by one? Let me sit on it. I'm sure it will come to me. To be blunt, I couldn't care less about your opinion on anything, Mr. Narrator Man. I just like having it in my possession. I don't need a name for it. Call him Smeckledo for all I give a fuck. Now, come on, Bucket John. Let's go find a nice little highway. Nice little dark area. We'll vent. Yep, uh, this area again. So for those of you who won't hear last stream... Narrator dialogue, yes, the big reveal. We're listening to a tape recorder this entire time. Ooh. Okay, this is day number 295. Tape number... That's new. I don't even know. I've lost track. Nothing feels real anymore. The longer I study this bucket, the less sense anything makes. Excuse you? The sheer euphoria I feel every time I pick it up. No matter how many times I've done it, it's always the same feeling. You don't need a reason for that. And the emptiness in my chest when I set it down. You don't need a reason for that either. It doesn't make sense. There's no explanation for it. Yeah, this person's never had a waifu. I still haven't figured out why I see the world so differently when this bucket is in my arms. Because why it loves you. Everything she loves you. So What do I do with this treasure? I can... I can monetize it. Uh... Yes. It's unthinkable the amounts of money people will pay for even just an hour with the bucket. I mean, going back to waifus, that's what the figuring this market's for. It's my golden ticket. But I have to be careful, because as soon as this gets out, there's going to be a target on my back. Just mass produce them. It's not that no, hard. I don't know who might be trying to get. What's that? Who's there? Uh. Come what? The narrator was not making that name up. Excuse me. Okay, that raises several questions here. Uh, I'm gonna be level with you guys. I thought the narrator was full of shit. That entire tangent. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Uh, Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Uh, you know what, Bucketchan? I think I'm. Uh, don't judge me too hard for it, but I think I'm gonna leave you behind uh, this particular run. I need my own answers. Yeah, I'll be back for you another run, but this time I think I have to do things myself. So, uh, moving right along, uh... When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay, I'll obey you this time, only because I have to. 
Uh, okay, that uh, sort of puts things upside down, and here we go again. All right. Sequel exhibit. Large room, lots of boxes. Stairs. Some are both red and blue, so I probably need to go right at some point. Maybe next run. And then near a fireplace, so... Boss's office. I think that's my next uh, agenda here. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. That sounds like a plan, Mr. Uh, Narrator Man. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? Okay, I don't see the figure. Uh... What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Two, eight, four, five. I don't know that. Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Correct, I couldn't possibly have known that. Uh, I got a figure to look for anyways, man. Uh, no, I don't see it. I'm going to look real silly if I... around twiddling his thumbs. Okay, Trying fine. Anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing uh. random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Okay, still no sign of the figure. They said by a fireplace, and that's the uh, one I know of. Ah, there we go. Yep. You're getting close now, Stanley. Correct. You've nearly gotten all of the Figler and Marines. Very soon, you'll collect the last one, and then the first number will equal the second number, and that will be it. Exactly. We'll be different people by then. Different in the sense that we used to have none of them. And now, we have them all. Mm -hmm. You can't go back to when you had no Figler and Marines. Unless I reset my save. Anyways, back to the light. Suddenly that explained why, uh... That explained why that big empty black space was there. Uh, that really confused me in the first run. That was very clearly new content, Descending but... Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest. As though he felt more free to think for himself. Yes, to exactly. The nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Correct. As a matter of fact, I have something else on my mind. I'm out of here. Whoops. Nope. Uh, never mind. Stanley actually got back into the elevator and went back up. Exactly. So why did Stanley do that when he knew that it would just lead back to his boss's office? Maybe I wanted to backtrack. A great question. I just can't wait to find out. Yep, back the way I came. Here we are, Stanley. It's your boss's office. Exactly the way it was before you got onto the elevator. It's still just exactly what it is. What a decision you've made to come up here and look at the office again. This has fleshed out the plot of the story in new and fascinating ways I could have never anticipated. Exactly. It's that keen eye for storytelling that you have. An incisive rapid fire of critical plot points, one after the other, weaving a rich tapestry of uncompromising narrative. Eight. Wow. <laughs> I'm bolted to the edge of my seat. Ah, <laughs> fucking painting jump scared me. I thought there was something behind me. Uh, okay, I can't go back out that way. 
Okay, fine, Mr. Narrator, we'll do it your way. We'll go back down the same elevator. Incredible. Now he's getting back into the elevator and going down again. Ladies and gentlemen, how does he keep coming up with all of this? You're not going to be a smartass about it. I know that's asking a lot of you, Mr. Narrator Man, but... Surely this time Stanley will walk forward into the spooky corridor, won't he? Well, when you put it like that... Did you think we were going to go forward down the spooky corridor? No. Exactly. It's time once again to go back up in the elevator. Hey. I can't even begin to grapple with what might be up there. Is it the boss's office again? Or what if it's the boss's office this time? <laughs> the suspense is killing me. Hey, listen, going up and down with predictable results is how the human race continues on, Mr. Narrator Man. Don't judge me. Forward we go again. Back to the office. It's a nice office. Uh, oh my god. It's the boss's office. <sighs> this absolutely changes everything for me. Give me a time out here for a minute while I process this. Uh, okay. Man, I want one of those toys in real life. I love these things. I want to say they call them dipping chickens, but... Okay, I'm ready. I'm prepared to embrace this stunning revelation and to move forward with... No! No, wait! No! I need more time to process. Okay, I think I get the point here, Mr. Narrator Man. Yes, I get it. You don't like my decision making. Well, tough shit, I'm the one playing. That means I decide where we go. And if you don't like that, tough tits. All right. I have fully come to terms with it. I have made space in my worldview for this astonishing new reality. As before, I turn to your expert eye for gripping narrative, Master Stanley. I'm gonna go out here. And they still won't let me out. That's interesting. Well, I'm being a bit railroaded here. Welcome to the stream table, and it's been back for the last couple of streams. Of course. Going back down in the elevator. How did I not anticipate it? I mean, sure, now it's obvious, but you have to understand that 30 seconds ago, this kind of thing had never been attempted before. I had no frame of reference to even anticipate it. That's just how revelatory Stanley's decision-making is. A breath of fresh air in a landscape of storytelling that has grown stale and repetitive. Although the way he's acting, uh, I'm sort of tempted to treat him like I did uh, Ametsan back in Needy Streamer. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Uh, I'm like about no. Back up. It'll really irritate him this time, I bet. Remember, up, down, up again. This is how, uh, humanity continues on. Hmm. You know what? I've just thought of something. Hold on, let's stop for a moment. Oh? Don't you realize? It's the anticipation, Stanley. You and I, we have no way of knowing what will be <coughs> at the top of this elevator. But the suspense... The agony of waiting and anticipating and having to guess, that's the real thrill. Exactly. Oh, I simply don't want to let that feeling go. It's so precious, so fleeting. Why don't we take this elevator ride nice and slow? Sure, I can dig it. There we go. Slow Isn't this ride. So much more exciting, you know, Stanley. Take it, it like easy. Nowadays, the only thing that audiences want is to be shocked as loudly and frequently as possible. Not they want me. Big explosive moments flung right in their faces from the very moment that things get started. But where's the tension? Where's the trust in the audience to build a slow and nuanced appreciation for the story, the characters? These are good points. Why aren't we given time to imagine the surprises? To have to think, and to anticipate, and then to marvel at the eventual reveal. This is storytelling, Stanley. Damn what right. you and I are doing right now. This is the most exciting narrative to be developed in years. 
And it's really all because of you. Exactly. You're the one who took this bold step of revisiting the exact same locations over and over. Truly, I mean it. This is unique and different. It's not like anything else out there. You see, I want stories that surprise me, Stanley. I want to have to think. I want to be engaged and yes. pandered to. We're being fed such unimaginative drivel all the time, and Correct. we all know it. Which is why we're so starved for content that makes us feel sharp and vital and alive. That's why people like you so much, Stanley. Because you're not afraid to spit in the face of tradition. Goddamn you're right. A model, you know. People look up to you. Which exactly. Is why, though I didn't know when to spring this on you, but well, I've gathered a little press conference for uh, you, so that you can talk yes. about your work and your storytelling and your life. I like yes, to talk I in public. You're not much for the public eye, but I thought it would especially mean a lot to the people who have been following you from the beginning. Yes. They really look up to you, Stanley. I don't know if you realize the impact you have on them. Right. This is the kind of gesture that might leave a tremendous impact on them for the better. Damn right. Oh, good. We're here. Uh, getting a bit of super liminal vibes from this uh, okay. hall. The room where we're holding the press conference. Should be just uh, around the corner here somewhere. <laughs> Guy who went to Mars. I wonder if that's an actual dude who went to Mars. Probably is. That's how this game rolls. Yes. Yes. Ah, uh, my name and light. Let's see. Being a celebrity in high gain is significantly better than being a celebrity in real life. Paparazzi aren't a thing for one. Yes, here it is, just through this door. All right. Here we go, my adoring public. Ah, Alexander the Great. That name right. is familiar. Are you ready? I've told them you're going to speak a little bit about the nature of surprise in storytelling and what it means to craft a truly unpredictable narrative. Oh, don't Correct. worry. You'll do great. Just be yourself and speak from the heart. I'm, I'm really proud of you, Stanley. Right. Uh, okay. It looks like they're ready for you. Go get them. Just a second. Uh, up again. Uh, <laughs> wow. Brilliant. That's the exact joke I just made. Nice. All right. No need to keep the adoring public waiting anymore. Oh, now that's a dude I want a handshake. Even more fitting, I just got for eating a pizza just before stream. That's a speech I want to watch. Damn right. Hello, Detroit. <laughs> this is what we're talking about right here. Yeah. How y'all doing? Good evening, fine people of the goddamn internet. Ah, uh, why'd you have to cock block me that much, dude? Come on. Uh, All of his I was just getting into that moment, dude. How could you do that to me? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. You know what? Come on, Bucket Chow, I need you back. Where are we going today, the Bucket asked. Stanley just smiled. Anywhere they went together would be perfectly fine with him. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his ch This was not the correct way to the meeting. Shut up, Mr. Narrator Man, Stanley you're cock me, I don't bucket like you. Calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Well, no, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. I don't think so. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Go there. Go to the cargo lift. Oh, well, uh. look who's got cold feet. Well, from here, it looks like the only way forward is down, since the lift won't be coming back, but that's okay. You've got a bucket. Did you know that buckets are routinely used as cushioning devices? It's true. You can fall on a bucket from literally any height and survive. I don't trust him 100%. Uh, whoops. Whoops. Looks like I was wrong. How clumsy of me. 
dickhead. I don't know who I blame more for, the bucket or the narrator. All of his co-workers were gone. Uh, what could it mean? Stanley decided shut up, to I don't care. Room. You Perhaps stay here, I'll come back for you another time. Man. That's the uh, thing about relationships. You gotta make sure... Okay, I don't remember this. That's new. Uh, very blue room. Uh, I was opening that door, having a different, uh... Never mind, they're both like that. That's strange. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps you know what? I'm feeling by the particularly disobedient at the moment. to admire it. The lounge was sublime, a work of art. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. No, I didn't. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. I don't give a shit about that. Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? To be frank, yes. Why, I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Huh. I wonder if that was there before I activated sequel mode, now that I think about it. You may recall last run, I got an ending, uh... So there's two endings I can get from here, but only one ending if I have the bucket with me. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. I'm going through the white door first because... Give me that. And there it is. The last Stiggly Wiggly. Damn right. Save this moment, Stanley. This is a real accomplishment. Yes, this exactly. This doing something just for the sake of doing it. Where so many people expect to be rewarded for the most trivial achievements, you've insisted that a job well done is its own reward. Exactly. I would tell you that I'm proud of you for collecting them all, but that would be like a reward, and we can't have that. <laughs> so, instead I'll just say, it's done. We're all done here. And now we can go to whatever the hell you were doing <laughs> before you hunted for figurines. Disobeying you, I can tell you that much. Okay, I think I said he wanted the red door, we're going blue. Aha, perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. No, I'm feeling blue. I still don't think we're communicating properly. Stanley walked through the red door. No, I didn't. I walked through that. All right, fine. Go ahead, Stanley. Yes. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find yes. out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. Do you see? There's nothing here. I haven't even finished building this section of the map. Right. Because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. So, uh, fun facts, uh, these are source placeholder textures, but I learned was it worth ruining this was actually part of the Unity for this version of the game. For you. Do you not think I put a lot of time into that? Because I did. So they basically had to go through the extra trouble of porting nothing, these to Unity too. This is what you wanted to see. Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable desires of yours. What would have made this game better? What did you want to see? Vehicles? Skill trees? Work with me. You've given me absolutely nothing so far. Everything you is its own reward, sir. Let me take a stab in the dark at a new design, and you can give me some feedback. There we go. A third option. This already feels leaps ahead of where we were before. Go ahead, Stanley. Take it for a spin. Yeah. I'm down. It's orange, even better. Okay. I'm going to stop you there. Now, tell me about your experience with this new version. Would you say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. Aha! 10 out of 10. I Best game. 100 out of 100. Where do these flashes of inspiration come from? How did I know the game needed a third door? Well... It's instinct, mostly. A calling in your gut. Yes. I really couldn't say where the idea came from, except that... I... 
I felt it in my soul. That's artistry for you. That, Stanley. Don't even try. I wouldn't. Here, my Titan Gears are behind me. From your previous playthrough, I've compiled a new version. And to be perfectly candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Let's take a look. Don't mind if I do. Uh, ooh, leaderboard. How'd I do? Good old Neil, Scottish dude. Huh, interesting stats. Oh, so we're playing this game again, huh? Just the narrator being the narrator, right? Don't know why I expected any better of him. <sighs> Whatever. So what are you going to show me this time? I'll humor you now, still. Would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? Again, honest answers, please. No, maybe it was your physical entity so I could tell you I nearly forgot. what I, I really feel. I've a prototype of a new game I've been working on, and now would be a lovely opportunity to give it some playtesting. Uh -huh. You wouldn't mind taking a look at it, would you? Perfect. Let me boot it up. More games than games, sir. In this game, the baby crawls left towards danger. You click the button to move him back to the right, and if he reaches the fire, you fail. It's a very meaningful game, all about the desperation and tedium of endlessly confronting the demands of family life. I think the art world will really take notice. It's not like my ex, course, dude. The message of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. So why don't you give it four So yeah, hours I think our reputation for loving sure elves is sort of a... Be sure to keep notes on your experience. Uh, okay, this is obnoxious. I'm sorry, but... Uh, uh, I can't hear myself think. Fuck this. You heartless bastard. Did you do it because you hate babies or purely to spite me? Whatever makes you feel better. If it's the latter, well, I don't know what to do. I'm completely out of ideas. I can't think of a single thing that might improve the experience for me. I'm not even going to try. Letting I'm me out. talk for I'm one. Out. I'm done. It's over. Thank you for playing. Your input was extremely valuable. Oh, hey, since my game was so awful, why don't we play someone else's game? Just to ease the pain. Let's see. What do we have here? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. This seems like it'll work. Let's give it a shot. Sure, whatever. Show us the other game, Mr. Narrator Man, who's apparently feeling a bit surly at the moment. Aha! No! What do you think this game is about? No! What's our backstory? What is our Not motivation? Not this... No! Mm. <sighs> well, it seems obvious to me that you are meant to play as a creepy man spying on innocent civilians below you from up high in your creep tower, perhaps for some sort of twisted erotic purpose. Hmm. Yes, that must Hey, can I drink that? What a fascinating Come on, give me that. Give me out of here. Get me out of this game. So far, I love everything about this game. Stan. Of course you do. And it seems there's even more. Get me the fuck Come out of here. Let's venture outward and see what else is out there. I don't particularly want to. God, not this game. I never had a game ruin itself so fast than the trailer of this one. I just saw that trailer and I was like, no, get this shit away from me. Uh, but again, I am a slave to the whims of the fucking Stanley Parable, so... Off I go. I mean, it does look nice, but so would a cake laced with cyanide. Oh no. No, 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 it can't be. Yes, walking. It is. It's an open world game. Good God, quickly, block it off. Oh, thank goodness, Stanley, what a close call. You really wandered off into that, that thing, that big, open, just wandering around, no right or wrong directions, no path to follow. You can just go in any... Uh, this reminds me, I want to play Breath of the Wild again. Heavens, we avoided it. We're out of the woods now, Stanley. Okay. No, we look like we're still in the woods. Here. Let's find another game. Preferably something with walls. Something with nice, big... Insurmountable walls. <laughs> okay, I think this I think it's teasing me here. Thing. Oh, 
Insurmountable walls. That's not a complete death send. Oh. Well. Wonderful. See, this is exactly what I had in mind. Just a nice big box for you to run around in. There isn't any possibility that you could get lost here. Now this is game design. Stanley, if you manage to get lost in this game, I will be phenomenally impressed. Yeah, no shit, it's not even a map. Uh, I can't think of Rocket League without that one Rob okay, Scallon so song. Exactly I don't know if you guys know. Here? Let's see. There are lots of cars here. We're in gonna no play race Rocket League in my house. Seeing that there's a ball of some kind back here. That's an amazing song for having only been written in the literal Stanley. hour. I think it's sports ball. Oh, what fun. We shall run the bases sure. and do a touchdown together. Yes, I think surely we must. Yes, we get it. You dislike sports. Here's the ball. Have fun. Don't mind if I do. Uh, wow, I'm going fast. Real fast. Uh, fucking kick. Yeah, that's actually pretty cool. I'm down for this. This reminds me, I've actually wanted to play the actual Rocket League. It? Are you winning? Is this fun? Is it better than my miserable little story that I worked so hard on? Yes! Stanley, I have a thought. And I realize I'm not a sportsologist, but... I don't think that's the word for it. ...generates a certain amount of raw adrenal pleasure, then surely multiple balls makes for an even more euphoric sports That's experience. correct. That's why we have two of them. Here comes another ball. Fuck, it. No, hold on, hold on. Yes. Oh, goodness, that really does feel amazing, doesn't it? Fuck this. Stanley, I'm like a child in a confectionery shop. Exactly. I simply have to have more. I'm insatiable. Sounds like a plan. More balls. I never have enough. All the balls. No pads, no helmets, just balls. We big ball. We ballin'. Big Stanley. Ballin'. We fly high, you know it. Ballin'. Are you having fun? Goddamn right I am. Real video game? Yes. I sure hope you're having a good time, because guess what? It's over. That's right. What? Your little fun comes to an end. You this is my game. Dick. And what I say goes. You get to have fun when I let you, Stanley. Besides, you need someone like me to set boundaries for you. Without rules or boundaries, video games are nothing. Yes, that's what I am. What am I, Dad? Structure. I'm your sense of purpose. And since you decided you didn't want to play my game, now I don't want to play with you either. So goodbye, Stanley. I'm leaving. See how you'd like it when I'm not around to set the rules. Somehow, I don't think you'll enjoy it as much. But who knows? You're an inventive kid. You'll come up with something. I've After already come up with something. You're the one who knows best. Exactly. Take care, Stanley. I may not be a father, but I do know best. And I say... Can opener! Hold on. What are you doing? What's down here? Stanley, don't do that. I can't follow you there. I can't help you. How will you write a story without me? You can't do it. You know that. Stanley. Wanna bet? Ah. Ah, so this is still here. Interesting. So for those of you who don't get this reference, this is the original uh, Half-Life version of the Stanley Parable. In its very first form, it was a mod of Half-Life 2. And this is basically it, unaltered, except darker and creepier looking. Very intentionally. I'm surprised they kept this, because again, we're not in Source anymore, so... That would have been a slightly bigger pain in the ass to port the assets over. Uh, the old version of my office. Oh, is that FL Studio? Cool. I can, uh, bust man's holiday. I don't mind, uh, making music while I'm in the middle of doing something besides it. Here, come on, close this door. I want to be left alone for a moment. I really need to start doing Centorial again. I do gotta learn how to do, uh, electronic music again. Okay, fine, I'll keep exploring. So if I loop back around and go to the... Or not. I wonder what he found. If what he wanted was to be the leading man in his own story, well, perhaps he's gotten it. Down in wherever he is right now. 
I wonder if he's happy with his choice, and if he's learned the heavy cost that comes with it. He'll understand soon what I was trying to tell him. He needs me. Some sure. Some will wrap everything up at the end to make sense out of the chaos and the fear and the confusion. That's who I am. Again, but you're sounding an awful like my uncle here. World. Oh, yes. Yes, I'll be back. There's no other way. Once this ends, after it all comes to a close, then I'll be back. The end will be here soon. Very soon. Will it? I can wait. Don't keep us waiting too long. I got an audience to entertain, man. Okay, thank you. All right, back to business. So what now? What are we doing now? Uh, it's taking longer than usual to load. It must be something real special. Never mind. Where are the balloons? Why isn't the narrator saying anything? Uh, Stanley, I'm sorry, but I have to put a pause on things. It's what? Just, it's those figurines. Those figlers. What about them? I haven't stopped thinking about them since you nabbed every last one. Wasn't it just the most intrinsically fulfilling moment of your entire life? I don't know about that, but it was fun. Brim with inner richness? Sort of? Yes, I know we're supposed to be telling a story, but won't you please indulge me with one more trip back to the memory zone? I don't, uh... More than to revisit the figurines. Okay, listen, just man. The last, time. uh... Listen, the last time we did that, that didn't end up working out too well for you. For you uh... Like, it was fine for me, but you didn't seem to be taking it too well, so... Are you, uh, you are sure about this, uh, okay, fine, it's your game, sir. We'll, uh, play by your rules. Yep, just as pretty as last time. Uh, they changed the sign, how clever. I did find all of them. I did try to play completionist. That's just what I tended to do with games before I, uh, started streaming them. Okay, uh... <laughs> Still not over that, huh? So, uh, I learned the significance of this joke. So apparently, this is a BAFTA award for uh, The Last of Us. Apparently, Stanley Parable, the original version in this game. Uh, well, not the original original, but like, fucking, uh... HD Remix is what they usually call it, but, uh, yeah. Apparently it was nominated for a bunch of awards, and uh, it lost every single one to The Last of Us. Apparently they made a joke about it uh, earlier in uh, one of the trailers for this very game. I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Ah, here's where it all began. The first collectible. Back then we had no idea of how many of them we'd find. Sure, it's right. six right there on the screen, but how could we know for certain? We were so innocent. We'll never be like that again, Stanley. Will we now? <laughs> I still really like that wall. Again, very much sugar. Very much sugar album cover. I like that. As a matter of fact, screenshotting that. Uh, <laughs> Son of a bitch, I forgot to mute again. Damn it. Whatever. Nobody here is going to jolt me for having to tend to my natural functions for a moment. Uh. And here was a second Stan Lorene. You found this one all on your own, just by poking around in the boss's bathroom. You did that, Stanley. I'll be honest. Back then, I had no faith in you to find any of them, let alone six. But you continue to surprise me in all sorts of mundane, unremarkable ways. Do I now? I will say, this one I literally found just literally stumbling into the bathroom. I just come in here, everyone, where I come into the boss's office anyway, so... Okay, I don't believe I recognize this. Uh... Okay, let's do a little quiz. Which of these rooms was the room you found your third mini stand? Can you remember? Okay, third one, uh... Oh, that's right. It was this way. 
I think. I fucking hope, otherwise I'm gonna look like an idiot. Hey, that's exactly right. It was here, under the stairs. It was the third one. You picked it up, right. and then after that, you had three of them. I'm glad these moments are so crystal clear in your memory, but I shouldn't be surprised. After all, right. science tells us that it's impossible to forget your third time doing anything. I know you'd understand, Tabor, and I've seen those Yakuza streams. Uh, pardon me. Uh, just a moment. I'm sorry about that. Uh, so, uh, sorry, I went to, uh, I think you know what happens when people have to sneeze, but I got sort of sidetracked afterwards, so, uh, I'm not gonna fuck around. I'm just gonna jump back into it. Sorry again. So what now? Let's see, what came next? Oh, yes, we found a figly in this pink room. Oh, well, I can't actually say I remember being in this room. That's because we weren't. In the memory zone, so it must have happened. Well, I'm collecting it anyway, so... There we go. This was the fifth mini stand, and this one was really something special. It was behind the boss's office. I remember it so clearly. Exactly. Fact, because this one is particularly special to me, I made a little video to commemorate the occasion. What? Enjoy. <laughs> wow. That takes me back. <laughs> okay, that's, uh... Wow. Good one, game. You got us good here. That was nice. Yes, I did. Uh, these guys uh, takes you back, doesn't it? I spent a lot of time making that video, but sure it was eight minutes I wouldn't have spent on anything else. <laughs>
Huh, eight minutes. That's about as long as it takes me to end my music videos. Uh, okay, this doesn't look too familiar, but I'll humor him. Uh, right. And then, Stanley, then we came to the last collectible, the final figurine, right here by the red and blue doors. This memory is the most distinct and clear in my mind. Double up. Perhaps because it was the one that happened more recently than all the others. Double Stanley up on a Friday you evening. Can say how the mind works? All I know is that this is the moment where you picked up a figly and I thought to myself, yes, that's all of them. They're all collected. I it thought Lords of the Same. Unlike any other. Except for the other moments picking up figurines, which it was exactly like. Ah, <laughs> clever. They lay to the same place. So what now? Damn, that's a fancy wall. I like that. And then there was no more. Because we've caught up to the present moment. Man, that's Nothing cool. left to do but move onward into the future. Goodbye, memory zone. Uh, okay, sure. I can dig it. Uh, no, 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 I'm uh, not done. I'm not ready to move on. Stop the what? loading screen. Isn't there some way we can stay here, keep enjoying these figurines? Let's just go backwards. We'll do the memory zone again from the opposite direction. See how that feels. Sure, whatever you say, buddy. We want to go backwards, we can okay, go backwards. Yes, the room with the red and blue doors. Oh, we got a triple up. This. We got a triple dip on these. Of all the figurines we looked at in our initial tour of the memory zone, this one is the most distinct and clear in my mind. No Let's shit, we just going. did it. More. All right. Here we go with another one. And here's where I made that video. Don't you remember the video we watched? Don't make me watch it again. <laughs> okay. Appreciate the courtesy of yes, double speeding it. I love that video. Fun fact, that's how I watch every single video I watch on YouTube nowadays. I double speed them unless it's explicitly music based. Still don't remember the pink room, Stanley. Still no memory of this one. Good room though. A solid room. Yeah, it kind of is, but picks up my thing. It doesn't suit me. These really were a treat to hunt down. You know, if there had been any kind of reward for finding all of these, it this really doesn't count as one. The intrinsic joy of collecting them. I'm very glad we resisted the temptation. Next one. I mean, this is kind of, sort of a reward. Let's go this way. Or not. So yeah, the warehouse is where I caught the actual fourth figure, where that pink room was. Anyways, back on the shitter we go. This was our second figly. Don't you remember? Yes, I remember it too. The past is truly a wonderful thing. Why does anyone ever choose to leave it? Sorry. Keep going. Pay for Mike. Just getting a sip. I need those. This and is it. the very first one we found. Here we are back in the Mashuga album cover. Introduced you to the figlery. And we are triple down. Oh, I want more memories, Stanley. I want to keep going. What else is there? What came before this? The exit. Um, uh, collectibles. Jump pad. Did it refuel? It's the terrible new content that we were originally sold on. I remember hating it back then, but time does put a rosy filter on everything. In fact, I dare say I'm actually quite fond of it now. Oh yes, the two doors! Who could have forgotten that? A classic memory, this one. Precisely. Uh, <laughs> same trick as the blue and red doors, and... And before everything else, there was your office. Full circle. Is there anything else? Was there something that came before your office? There's something I feel I can remember. I can remember. I can remember. Darkness. Yes, I'm remembering something now. I remember before this whole story got started. Back then, I was... I was different. 
I used to make big decisions. I was passionate. I was skeptical. I weighed each decision with profound thoughtfulness. Did and then, you? Somewhere along the way, I stopped making decisions. I became lazy, and I came up with well, came up with a character named Stanley to do my thinking for me. Oh, that make makes things interesting. To decide which way to go. I would cheer him on as he collected figurines for no reason. Why did I invent Stanley? Was I lonely? Yes, perhaps that's it. Perhaps I needed to imagine I had companionship. Many such and cases. Stanley really did make for a wonderful companion, even if he was a fiction. Right. But uh, I suppose it's grown old. I, I want to think for myself again. I want to go back to how it used to be. Yes, I can be on my own again. I can do it. I'll be stronger this time. I'll take care of myself. I don't need Stanley anymore. Oh, but he truly was so much fun to play with. You know what? Since we're in the memory zone, how about one more good memory? All right, Let's what's the grand finale? Once and give Stanley one more run of the office, and then I'll retire him for good. I did enjoy telling this story so very much. Okay, here we go. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Is it now? Yep, here we are back here. Wait, Stanley thought to himself. Am I sure that the orders stopped coming in? How is that possible? They never stopped. Surely I was mistaken. No, no, the orders were still missing. For now. How productive. Uh, 4.32. Apparently this guy gets out of some shit. You know what? I think we'll go for that ending now. Sorry, Bucket John. I need to leave you behind one more time. Off we go. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Just a quick detour. Standing now in this incredible room, Stanley for the first time understood true happiness. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Yes, I did. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. No, we're going down. Let's do a little exploring. If we're gonna do one last run, we gotta make it memorable. But Stanley didn't want to go back to the office. He wanted to wander about and get even further <laughs> off track. So now in order to get back, he needed to go, um, uh, well, uh, da, 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 da. from here, it's, um, left. Oh, uh, no. Jeez. No, to the right, my mistake. Yeah, thanks for the jump scare. No, 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 not the right. Why would I have ever said it was to the right? What was I thinking? You trying it's to prove clearly... a point here? Oh dear, would you hold on for a minute, please? Fine, I'll take a sip. Well, you do that. Now, let's see. We went down right, left, down, left, right. Yep, yep. Ah, that's okay, good. Okay, yes. I've got it now. This story is absolutely, definitely this way. All right. Cool headlights, dark maintenance office, and, uh... No, 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 this isn't right at all. You're not supposed to be here yet. This is all a spoiler. Quick, Stanley, close your eyes. Okay, 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 okay. We just, we just have to get back to, um, oh, who am I kidding? It's all rubbish now. The whole story completely unusable. How about, rather than waste my time trying to salvage this nonsense, We'll just restart the game from the beginning. Sure, whatever you say. Suppose we don't wander so far off track, hmm? Okay, from the top. You got it. Uh, pardon me a moment. Uh... What? Uh, never mind. Wasn't that important. Uh, back to business. All of his co-workers were gone. 
What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Uh, does this look the same as it did before? Something about it looks different. In any case, uh. uh. When Stanley. Wait. Wait. What? No, I. No, I restarted. I swear, I definitely restarted the game over. Got Not you did. Fresh. This is, uh, Everything should interesting. Be... Oh, did something change? Stanley, did you change anything when we were back in that room with all the monitors? Not intentionally. Of the story somewhere, or... How would I have even done that? Why am I asking I you? I had no color. I'm the one who wrote the story. Exactly. It was right here just a minute ago. I know for sure that it's here somewhere. Exactly. Oh, it's an adventure. Come, Stanley. Let's find the story. I say we go through this door. Just keep going right. Right. Nowhere but right. Right is right. Always turning right. I think that's all you saw from mazes, right? Or was it the left? I know if you stick to either right or left, you will solve any maze ever I'll made. Say, this is the worst adventure I've ever been on. I can promise you there definitely was a story here before. Do we just... do we need to restart the game again? Well, I find it unlikely that we'll ever progress by starting over and over again, but it's got to be better than this. Okay, let's give it a shot. Why not? Whatever you say, Mr. Narrator Man. You want to reset again? Reset again. I am perfectly down to, uh... Gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Yep. All looks familiar so far. So now we come to... Oh, that's not right. Okay, yep, it's worse. I might be remembering this wrong. It's possible the story is back where we just came from. Right. Why don't we go back the other direction and see if we missed anything? Sure, if you open the door. All right. We got to backtrack, that's fine, just like every other game. So that's about right, D-Bird. I don't got to find the story, I already know it, in my case. Aha! Uh -huh. I knew we'd miss something. The story. Here it comes. Okay, that's all right. No, wait. Never mind. Not the story. Okay, let's head back the other way and retrace our steps. <laughs> okay, so I think we went after... Uh... Now this... Well, I'll be honest. I don't recognize this place at all. Yeah, what's this dear ass looking story? place? I don't think so. I can't quite recall, but I believe my story took place in an office building. It... Is that correct? Or maybe condemned. Do you remember, Stanley? What do you guys do you think? Is this more duress or condemned? What we were supposed to be doing. How about this? You win! Congratulations! Did I? I you put in a lot of hard work, and it really paid off. So, good job. No, that's for the end of the stream. Right now, uh... No. No. I don't feel right about this at all. I agree. You, know you didn't put in any actual work for that win. Some people win fair and square, and this was not one of those situations. Again, that situation is coming later. I'm getting weirded out by whatever this place is. I don't care what might happen this time, I have to restart. I agree, get me the fuck out of that place. It was creeping me out. Alright, I've got a solution. This time, to make sure we don't get lost, I've employed the help of the Stanley Parable Adventure Line. Stanley Parable 2 Adventure Line, line. you gotta get it right. Is that? Stanley Parable 2 Adventure Line Trademark. Follow the line. You want me to follow the line? I can follow the line. Like about tram or something. Off I go. You see? The Cliff line ops the line. The story is. It's over in this direction. Onward, Stanley, to destiny. Only a significantly less depressing. Wouldn't wherever we end up be our destination? Even if there's no story there. Or to put it another way, is the story of no destination still a story? It's all me. Simply by the act of moving forward, 
Are we implying a journey such that a destination is inevitably conjured into being via the very manifestation of the nature of life itself? Okay, Stanley, I need to follow this train of thought for a minute. Just stick with me. Now, we can both agree that the nature of existence is, in fact, a byproduct ah, of one sort of real... of that existence, right? Hi, okay. Abusa. Now, if my experience of your existence rests in Stanley your subjective experience of this office, is this office, in fact, the skeleton of my own relative experiential mental subjective construct? Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. That got a bit weird back there. Well, sort I of did. Apologize. Not sure where I was going with all that. You know what? I think what we need right now is a bit of music to lighten the mood. Music. I like music. Especially this banger. I love this song. Blake Robinson, ladies and gentlemen. Look him up. He makes amazing symphonic video game covers. And symphonic music in general. Essentially the showpiece for uh, sampled orchestral instruments. His stuff is so good, you would never believe that it was all software. Straight up. I would shout him out, but I don't know if he's on Twitch. I do know String Player Gamer is on Twitch, though. And he is an amazing dude. Go back and look at that fern. Stanley, this fern will be very important later in the story. Will Make it now? Sure you study it closely and remember it carefully. You won't want to miss anything. I mean, I do know some people are obsessed with plants, but not usually ferns. They're into another green leafy plant. I'm not one of those people, but I am them. Wait, what? We're back at the office? No. No, no, line. You do know we're looking for the Stanley Parable, right? The story? Is any of this ringing a bell? Oh, uh, no, 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 not again, line. How could you have done this to us? And after we trusted you. Well, that's unfortunate. We've been through, you, well, you don't trust the line. You're the one who introduced it to me. It. Maybe this Restart. is a... Okay, uh, have it your way. You know what, Stanley? I say forget the adventure line. What's it ever done for us? We're intelligent people, right? Why can't we make up our own story? Sure, I can dig it. Daring, mysterious. Ooh, this all sounds perfectly doable. Why don't we yes. simply start wandering in... Well, I don't know. How about this direction? Which direction? Uh, okay, that door. Off we go. What awaits us over here? Now. Yes, this is exciting. Just me and Stanley forging a new path, a new story. Well, it could be anything. What do you want our story to be? You tell me. Wild. Use your imagination. Whatever it might be, Stanley, I'm ready for it. Well, games are giving me too much to work with at the moment. It's a corridor. At oh, oh, dear. No, not you again. Stanley, I'd also like to veto the line from having any role in our awesome new story. No lines or monitor rooms. Just don't acknowledge it, and we should be fine. If you say so, Mr. Narrator, uh, I will try my best to ignore it. I mean, look at this. It's not even going in a straight line. All too easy to ignore. It's going to be directions I can't even follow. Ridiculous. Ah, a choice. We get to make a decision. From right. here, the story is in our control. How important we mustn't squander the opportunity. Precisely. In fact, I believe I need a minute to think here. Just walk in circles for a minute. Okay. So I know that each door has to... Well, he asked me to walk in a circle. Somewhere, the place where we, we move in circles, go, colliding with our fate. 
at least on a bleeding a razor's edge means that our destination corresponds with the country yeah i kind of skipped like 13 or 14 minutes origin. of music there but so starting from the right let us ask it's uh well, the only part that's really relevant to this particular okay that's enough going. i apologize for any uh motion sickness uh people afflicted in here the but on the right is the correct one sure Another victory for logic come stanley our destiny awaits i completely zone out about that but uh excuse me oh hold up what's this hmm Hmm. The confusion ending. Uh, telling me that's what this is. It's all one giant ending. And we're supposed to restart the game what, eight, what? eight times? That's really how all this goes? It's all oh, uh, determined? So now, according to the schedule, I restart again. Then what? Am I just supposed to forget? I don't like what this ending. I don't want to forget? My yes. mind goes blank simply because it's written here on this, this thing. Exactly. Oh. Well, who consulted me? Precisely. You well, take I the lead. Why don't I you have no problem getting this. taken the lead, so... Really... No, it can't be. I, d I don't want it to be. I, That's I right. Take control. I, I don't want to forget what's going on. I don't want to be trapped like this. I won't restart the game. I won't do it. Sounds like a plan. I won't do it. I won't do it. So let me out. And the timer to have stopped? Pardon? Does that mean, um, did we do it? Did we break the cycle? The, um, whatever it is that made this schedule? Right. How would we even know? Will someone come for us? Will something happen? Something someone will find out. So, okay. I guess now we just wait, you know. I suppose in some way that this is a kind of story, wouldn't you agree? I'm not quite sure if it's the destination uh... or the journey. Though they're always saying that life is about the journey and not the destination. So they do I say hope that. that's where we are right now. We'll find out, won't we? Eventually. Well, in the meantime uh, uh... Pardon that okay, that startled me slightly, uh Uh, okay, proceed with caution. I don't think I like this situation. Wait, Stanley thought to himself. Am I sure that the orders stopped coming in? How is that possible? They never stopped. Surely I was mistaken. Yeah, we're going full snake mode, Dad. You know what? I want my bucket back. A good bucket. Yes. A strong bucket. A humble bucket. A committed bucket. A bucket of culture yes. and distinction. Come on, Bucket Chan, I need you. I'm uh not feeling too comfortable. Oh shit. It's there again. Uh come on, Bucket Chan, let's uh keep moving, let's just ignore it. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. And as for the narrator, to be blunt, I don't think I trust him too much either at the moment, so, uh... This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him. Yes. Telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. Correct. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was it... No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, I didn't. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. Yes. The cargo lift, yes. Go there. Go to the cargo lift. Yes, uh, come on. Come on, bucket -chan. Let's go find... Good, the... said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Sure. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. What are you talking Stanley about? Chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. That's because the bucket is doing it. That... Okay, uh, startled me. Uh, welcome, Soul. Uh, Brother Soul, thank you for the raid. In here, said the bucket. Go into this dark room over here. Right. Stanley uh... once again obeyed blindly. So, uh, yes, uh, welcome to the stream, Brother Soul, and, uh, say hello to Bucket Chan. She keeps me comfort in these trying times. Bucket Chan, this is, uh, Soul Marquis. Uh, magic dude. 
Cool dude. My brother. Uh. Now pick up the phone, said the bucket. Pick up the phone, and it will take us back home, where we can go about life together. Sounds like a plan. Let's do it, Bucket John. I suppose maybe that's a reference. This is the sad story of a man named Stanley and his bucket. What? Once upon a time, I gave Stanley a bucket because I thought he was lonely and could use a friend. And then, very distressingly, he began to believe the bucket could speak to him. That thing's a cam. What the hell are you talking about? Nice stickers. That's a cool poster. I want one like it. Ah, uh, Bucket John. The Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket was merely meant to provide the comforting glow of companionship. It doesn't literally talk and give you orders. Whatever Stanley is hearing the Bucket say to him is just in his head. I don't believe you, Mr. Uh, narrator Man. Lately, I've been concerned about him. Wouldn't you be concerned as well? What's there to, to be concerned about? Like this, obsessing over an inanimate metal object? You're an inanimate metal obsession, object. But I don't know how I can convince him. I don't know if he'll listen to me. Nobody should listen to you. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. Me and Bucket John have something special. Well, I'll try anyway. Stanley, can you hear me? Listen to me. It's just a bucket. It can't think. How it dare can't you? Talk. How ever fucking dare you? you? Is effectively transfer a liquid from one location to a different location. That's it. It doesn't do anything else. Is that any way to talk to a lady, Mr. Narrator? Yes, exactly. Don't listen to him. I will not listen to him, Bucket John. Come on. Let's go back home. <sighs> you see, he's not listening. He's still taking orders from the bucket. You know, once upon a time, it was me he took orders from. Me he trusted and listened to. Now all he cares about is his awful bucket. This stupid hunk of metal. Oh, I see what's going on now. He's jealous. Ignore anyone in your life except me. Well, uh, sorry soul, sorry T-Birds, sorry viewers. I guess it's just me in the bucket now. It's sad. I suppose he doesn't need me anymore. Goddamn right I don't. Man, he's just going to cling to this bucket, this cold, empty bucket, this sort of shiny bucket. Hmm. Well, I'll give it this. The bucket does have a nice shine to it. Yes, I do believe you're real, Bucket John. You are more real to me than anybody has ever been. I don't need anybody else. Just you. Just the bucket. Yes, I suppose on closer inspection that it doesn't quite look like your average hardware store bucket. That's because it isn't. More, um, what am I trying to say? Sturdier. More capable of transporting liquid. Like it would be better at moving an amount of water from one room to another. My God, of you. Yes, that's fine. This is a time loop I'm happy to be in. Oh my God, what am I saying? better at carrying water from room to room. It's a bucket. It's literally just a bucket. Don't compare my I bucket to that wench, T-Bird. In which it's so much more than just a regular bucket. Oh no. I'm, I'm having feelings. The bucket. Who oh, wouldn't? No, 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 no. What's going on? Why do I want to be with the bucket? Hear what the bucket has to say. Do anything it asks. What's wrong with? I don't understand. Perhaps, perhaps, if I had the bucket, no, it would be less confusing. Yes. No, my bucket. She's mine. In this she is only mine. Stanley, give me the bucket. Get your fucking out. Give me the bucket, Stanley. I need it. Give it to me now. Give it, or I'll. Yeah, that's right. That's what I thought. Just run like the... Yeah, run like the little bitch you are. Bucket John is mine. Get your fucking own fucking bucket. There's no need to be... There's no need to bring Bucket John down just because of your failings in life. How wonderful. Stanley was alone. Finally. This is great, he thought to himself. This is what I've wanted all along. I got what I wanted. No, I don't want to be alone. 
Still lying, huh? <sighs> Come on, Bucket friend. Let's find someplace else to hang out. Companionship that stands the test of time. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. I'm still not particularly in the mood to obey you. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was it no? Never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Go th good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. It looks like There's I'm doing the exact same there thing, I need but... You to do. Stanley did not question Just give me why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced still that the trying had to, to him, still playing this game, huh? He did whatever the bucket asked. Listen, you and I both know you're full of shit, Mr. Narrator. I'm not playing this game. In here, said the bucket. Go into this dark room over here. Stanley once again obeyed blindly. As a matter of fact. This probably isn't the bucket's wall at all. Now pick up the phone, said the bucket. Pick up the phone. Okay, this looks ridiculous. Whoa, hold on. Why did you unplug the phone? Were you trying to resist the bucket's orders? Stanley, I was joking. Obviously, Still the trying to justify yourself, to you huh? And telling you to do things. Buckets can't talk. It was a joke. Don't you get the joke? It's funny, Stanley. A the only joke bucket. here is you, Mr. Uh, Narrator. Can't you see? Oh, oh, goodness. I must have really bungled up the delivery if you actually took me seriously. Where did I mess up the joke? Should I have paused for longer or spoken quicker? Hmm. You gotta stop the talking. Timing is so difficult. I wish I were better at it, but there isn't exactly an instructional video on comedy that one can watch to fully. Oh wait, yes there is. Um, it's sitting right here. Let's take a look. Fine, I'll humor you. No pun intended. What is comedic timing? What is comedic timing? How does it work? How long should it last? How can it be used to effectively silence your political enemies? Uh, and more importantly, can it be taught in its entirety within 90 seconds? A lot of things can. I have faith in you. The answer to all of these questions is yes. Let's dive deeper. If you've ever told a joke or made someone laugh, in all likelihood, you did it while standing 50 to 80 centimeters from them in a room of no more than 76 degrees Fahrenheit, with one of your arms raised straight upward at a 15 degree angle from your body. These are the optimal conditions for good comedic timing. I'm not buying to this. To begin the joke, start by stating and spelling your name. Next, provide a brief synopsis of the joke, including the specific times at which the recipient of the joke will laugh, and then spell out your name a second time. With these steps complete, it's time to begin the humor. Speak the entire joke in no more than 18 seconds, and no less than ah, good timing, Gunnar. You need to watch this. Only for bathroom breaks when necessary. Yes. When the joke has We're learning how to make jokes. It is customary to inform your listener that the joke is over by declaring in your loudest possible voice, I'm Dunny with the funny. Let's practice screaming. You're writing your notes? I'm Dunny with the funny now. I'm Dunny with the funny. I don't know if I'll use that one, but I'm sure yeah. for the rest of you, this it'll be perfect. This is a perfect example of expectations management, which is the cornerstone of good comedy. Finally, it's time to hand out surveys. Surveys. Collecting hard data from your audience on how rapt they were throughout the joke is the only way to grow or learn as a comedian. An effective is this how survey it works? should be no less than ten pages long, and should include the same question reprinted several times. Just to ensure the survey taker is actually paying attention. Uh, like Van Halen and, and the M&M &M clause. And, at random. and that's all there is. With these strategies at your disposal, you'll have audiences doubled over in laughter, and even tripled over in laughter, in no time at all. Just remember to let them stop laughing at some point, 
you gut busting little scamp. Gut busting all, little scamp. With each of us needed on the front lines of the war to fight the 12 legged invaders who threaten our uh. very existence and to very likely die in a hailstorm of bullets and mandibles. All of us must be prepared to give our lives to this noble cause, just as our children must do after us and their children after them. Godspeed and may Earth reign supreme. That took a bit of a turn. Hey, goodness, this video is a little outdated, isn't it? Slightly. Well, no matter, I think the fundamentals of proper comedic timing are still as relevant today as they were back then. That's so true. with that in mind, I believe the only way forward is for us to return to the two doors and walk through all of this again, so I can try telling my story with more appropriate comedic delivery. Come along, let's head back. You got it. Uh, so I guess we're backtracking. I was expecting a reset, but sure. So yes. I can feel it. This time, I'm really going to nail the delivery. You'll be in stitches. A talking bucket, you'll say? How ridiculous. How absurd. What a hilarious concept. You're still on the this. Of comedy. That's what you'll call me. Thank goodness we had the instructional video. Otherwise, who knows where we'd be right now. The denial on this dude. Comedy, that's for sure. The bucket spoke to Stanley. Hmm. Stop mocking buckets on, you son of a bitch. The bucket spoke. Oh, I'll figure it out on the fly. No need to overthink things. Don't listen to a bucket, John. He's like one of those. He's fucking. He's one of those Don Rickles wannabes. The insult comedian. One of those unpleasant people. Not just hacks, but dickweeds. All the worst. Truly the worst kind of comedian. The exact sort of people uh, we need to bring back the practice of throwing fruits at them. Throw fruits at the narrator, that's why. Here we go. You ready? <clears throat> when Whatever. Stanley and the bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. Fine, if I'll shut you up. No, 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 no. You were supposed to go through the door on the right, leading back to the phone. It may. Did you not even look at the instructional video? I think this is all covered very clearly. There's no way I can make the comedic timing work now. It's done. Oh, what a tragedy. It's completely down and over. It's all your fault, Stanley. You're the one insisting on the community of other joke writers. I'm going to be shamed at every one of our meetings from now on. All because you couldn't watch a simple video and take a hint. Are you proud of yourself for bringing me down, Stanley? Are you? Oh, thank fuck he stopped talking. Here we go. You ready? <clears throat> what? When Stanley and the bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. Fine. All right. Jeez. Dark. What? Uh, we're back at the phone already. No, no, no. What's going on? There were supposed to be several rooms leading up to this. There was supposed to be a build-up to this point. What a, a great payoff. display of remarkable comedic wit, which culminates in this scene with the phone. But now the timing's completely off. Joke will never land. Uh, damned if we do, damned if we don't, huh? And it's all my fault. I must have forgotten that the phone room comes immediately after the Whatever. room. What an egregious mistake. You're I've made a fool of myself. Tearing, trying to tear me away from Bucket John for this. Comedy. I'm have not, you no shame? I'm not even the lowliest joke. Well, Goddamn right. I think I need to go back and rewatch. Yeah, that's right. Fuck off. Leave me in the bucket alone. Yes, surely that will help me improve my. Stanley, you love the bucket so much, it's like you. Ah, uh, finally, so we're alone. Your other most prized possessions pale in comparison. Yes. Well, let me try that again. Uh. Just let him get it out of his system, Bucket John. Yeah, you mock me and for having somebody I love, Mr. Narrator Man. You're just like a lot of other people I've met in my time as a. Uh, see, Unity, yep. Like I said earlier. Ported. Okay, that one was good. I'll give you that. Away from making fun of Stanley's obsession with the bucket, which was the whole point of this. <sighs> I knew good Typical good. fucking people. I need more instructional videos. <sighs> That's exactly what Why do people always mock me for having people I care about? This is bullshit. It's just like fucking seventy percent of the people I've met at my time doing this. Well, no, the other way around. Thirty percent of the people I've met this. The seventy percent of the people who have been good to me, who understand the power of connections. 
the power of having people to comfort you in your darkest hour. Wait, Stanley thought to himself. Am I sure that the orders stopped coming in? How is that possible? They never stopped. Go on, Bucket John. Stanley want to be a better man and a better co-worker. In time, perhaps, he would become both of those things. Stanley clutched the bucket. Go on, Bucket John. You know what? I'm feeling, uh, particularly spiteful. Just for mocking you and I's beautiful relationship. Still no one was here. I'm going to go ahead. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. Correct. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. I'm going to let him attempt to tell a story. And then I'm going to pull the rug out from under him. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned. Come on, 2845, let's do this. Life. Let me in. But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes. Yes. This is certainly the most logical explanation. Uh, where was I? Ah, uh, that's right. Yes, she does forget the best of me, T-Bird. Again. Mr. Narrator Man can mock me as much as he likes. The fact of the matter is, the bucket and I have an inseparable bond. She's mine and only mine. His sheer... In the surmountable jealousy. Downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. Is... It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Exactly. Just soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. Exactly. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. Yes. Come on, bucket. Oh, you got a spark. Cool, bucket, John. Stanley and the Bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read, Mind Control Facility. Come on, bucket John. I need your uh, warmth and guidance, and your light. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the Bucket both wondered to themselves. Uh, whoops, uh, almost fell over. That would have been awkward. I don't want to go to the bottom this run. I already did that the first time. Don't need to relive that. Cameras! The monitors jumped to life, and Stanley nearly dropped the bucket in shock. We are on candid camera. Everyone in the office was being videotaped, monitored like guinea pigs. Some people are into the that. The had never seen anything like this, and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring it that everything would be fine. That's right, Bucket's on. Not to worry. Was the bucket under the mind control facility's influence as well? Had what? the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? What kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? That's irrelevant These to me. These questions raced furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. Uh, you know what? I think I did a breather for a moment. Uh, I need to hang out here. Feeble. You're listening to this dude, Bucket Chan. He's gone from insulting me to from, from insulting you to insulting me. Such a cruel beast of a man. Although all the compliments are Kevin Brighting, he uh man sure the knows how to act. He would make a fantastic villain in uh, another sort of game. Like not one of these passive aggressive sorts of villains, like. Open? Ah, it's letting me back, sure. Uh, I'm fine, we'll backtrack a bit. Uh, you don't mind, do you, Bucket John? Uh, you know what? Just for shits and giggles, let's hit this button. What's this do? Oh, sweet! I can dig this! Dance with me, Bucket John. Now, this is a real Hollywood ending right here. I'm not much of a dancer, but uh, this is a. Uh, when you love somebody enough, anything seems fun.
Ah, this is wonderful. Uh, Alright, that was fun, but we got the business to attend to. No! He screamed into the fight. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket to attend. His one friend in the entire world. Friend? At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. Exactly. Friend is still inaccurate, though. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. Is that really so what I he thought? he and the bucket would dismantle the controls for good. Two best friends, Stanley and the Bucket, up against the world. They high-fived in a really cool way, and the Bucket made a sassy comment about taking down the system. You know what? Don't listen to him, bucket -chan. I'm, uh... We already know that we cannot trust this gentleman, so... You know what? I have another idea. bucket -chan, You and I... You and I are the only... Two who could possibly rule this company together. We are the only ones who know what's right. We are the only ones who can be trusted to keep the morons of this world in line. Just you and me, buckets on. The new age of man begins with us. But at the last second, the bucket jumped in and pressed the button to turn on the controls. Stanley gasped in horror. What are you talking this about? Been the bucket's plan all along? To take over the machine and claim the power for itself? How could the bucket have betrayed him like this? Okay, this Stanley guy has it wrong. Was prepared to throw the bucket away in disgust when suddenly an image appeared upon the enormous screen. Birds. Silly. Silly birds. Oh, the cool. Control buttons became active again. Oh, sweet. Stanley flipped through one video of silly birds after another, and then it dawned on him. This wasn't a mind control facility at all. It wasn't? It was a facility for monitoring and surveilling silly birds all over the world. I'm surprisingly okay the with this. mind controls were only a facade to disguise its true intentions. Had the bucket known this all along? Stanley marveled at the metal genius in his hands. The one who had pointed him towards this. Oh shit, you're right, T-Bird. Stanley and the Bucket never found. Yeah, this dude thinks he's a roast artist. The rest of their lives here in this place, flipping through live streams of the silliest birds imaginable. Then again, he's saying of silly birds, not cool birds. His life could have taken. This one was surely the best, and Stanley was happy. Yeah, that's fine. I'm totally fine with this. You know, I don't think I need to rule the world. I'm fine just staring at birds for all eternity. I used to know it. You know, I actually used to know a dude who was a legit bird watcher. Uh, I don't know if we brought any of his uh, bird watching supplies with us in the move. Would be nice. All of his co-workers were gone. We actually live in the perfect area for that now. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Uh, I want to start bird watching again now that he mentions it. Let's see, uh, what have I not done yet? All right. Uh, huh. I'm not even ho- Excuse me, I'm not even hovering over that window and I'm still affecting it. Anyways, uh... I'm trying to see, what have I not done with the bucket yet? Where have Bucket Chan and I not gone yet? Uh, ah, I know what we're doing. I think we'll make this the, the uh, last run of the night.
Not everyone is so lucky to have a bucket. Exactly. It's a very lucky fellow. Very lucky indeed. Don't give up though, gentlemen. Or ladies. Your very own bucket chan will find you eventually. If I can find one, you can too. Touched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Alright. You know, you and I have had a lot of fun in this uh, office, Bucket Chan, but I think it's time for us to finish our shift. No one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Right. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. But on second thought, uh, I'd like a moment alone with you. Come on, Bucket Chan. Oh, Stanley, can you feel it? The broom closet. It wants the bucket. You can feel that, can't you? The aura of jealousy. It's oh, as right. clear as day. This broom closet believes it deserves the bucket. Well, it doesn't. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Come on, bucket on. Uh... So what we want to do here is we want to do this. A little bit of this. Come on. Come on, I got this last stream. Stepping in. There we go. Come on, Bucketon. It's time for us to skedaddle. Just a nice little quiet time alone. We've had a lot of uh, good times in this office, Bucketon. But it's time for us to clock out. What do you say, Bucketon? It's time for us to leave. Find some place that nobody will ever find us. Where we can be free from this rapscallion narrator's influence. He will never again assault, insult you, me, or my friends. Let's be rid of this awful man. At least until the next time I do this game. Come on, bucket -chan. Off we go. Let us have faith. Now leaving. Exactly. Come on, bucket -ton. Going up. Six floors. Very comfortable number. Six. I don't know why that's such a comfortable number for me. Six. Like, that's completely meaningless in high gain. And before you state the obvious, uh... So, fun fact. You might think six, 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 uh, that's the common number, but... Did you know that that's not actually the correct number of the beast? No, the Bible 666 doesn't show up at all. The actual canonical number of the beast is 616. 616. There have been times where I've used that number myself for certain things here and there. Not in a while, though. I think I've grown out of that phase of uh, pointless satanic references. Might have something to do with uh, meeting Abby, not wanting to alienate her. Can't because I talk her into a collab if I have devil demonic imagery everywhere, you know? Escape pod, we're almost there, bucket -ton. Come on. We're almost there. We're close. Yes, exactly. Let's go, bucket -ton. Actually, on second thought. Go on without me. I just realized this facility needs me. I can't possibly allow the narrator to insult you again. I can't leave until I found a way to get my revenge on him. I'll be back for you one day, Bucket Son. Please remember me. Please wait for me. I vow I will be back for you. I will make that narrator pay. You rest a fucking sword. Someday. That narrator. He will pay for his crimes against me and my friends. Sleep with one eye open, Mr. Narrator. You may think you're safe. 
And maybe you are for tonight. But you can rest assured. I'll be back for you. I'll be back for buckets on. And I will succeed in the end. Who? Well, that was one. Well, that was some fun shit, wasn't it? So, yeah, I guess I got a little too into the world, didn't I? So, uh, yeah. I think I'm, uh... That's actually not even close to all the endings, but... I think all the rest of them are, uh, endings, uh, besides one. There's one... Last sort of ending, uh... Actually, you know what, no. I'll just finish the whole game on stream, why the fuck not? It's, uh, something I just gotta do. I gotta commit to it. So, yeah. At some point next week... There's still technically a lot of endings I haven't gotten to because a lot of the, uh... Endings from the original mod I actually haven't gotten yet. I should probably have been keeping track of what I've gotten, but in any case, uh... I'll, uh... I don't know, I'll just look up a flow chart and I'll see what I got next. Make a checklist or some shit. Till then, so yeah, next week, look forward to either the penultimate episode or final episode of this game. So that'll do it, almost do it for tonight, but I promise you, I promised you lovely people a new song, didn't I? And you are going to get it momentarily. But first, I gotta make sure the word is out. Gotta let the Twitter know. Brand new song. Brand new song premiering right now. I'm somewhat lying because I need to take a break. I need a little more water before I, uh, Introduce you all to the new song. But until then, get excited. Get hyped. Be ready. This is some of my proudest work yet. And I think you're going to really fucking like it. Or at least I hope you do. But until then. Just uh, hold tight for a second. Let me pull up the song and we will listen to it momentarily. Till then, get a drink. Hit the bathroom. I will be right back.
fucking right. I'm back and you know what that means. So, who's fucking ready for a brand new song? I said, whoops. I said, who's fucking ready for a brand new goddamn song? That's right, that's right. Welcome to the stream, Charmine. I knew I could rely on you to be excited. <laughs> Uh, yes. That said, I did, uh, possibly telegraph the song a bit. Yes, new song, new song, get fucking hype. But before I do, I got a couple of things to uh, explain. So, uh, unfortunately, I may have slightly telegraphed what the song uh, is. So, uh, those of you more eagle-eyed, uh, more eagle-eyed viewers probably saw that, uh, I uploaded a new video to my music channel just before stream. It was a remaster of my song for Shimada Tiger from last year. Because I liked it, it's a good song, and it holds up better than I thought, but I still thought I could uh, use a little more polish. Uh, I figured it needed uh, the more modern touch. Uh, needed the assistance of some of the techniques I've learned in my time uh, doing this, you know? Just uh, make it sick a little more. And if you listen to it, I thought... Uh, I thought I did a fairly good job of it for what it was. Uh, you know what, fuck it. I think I'll just go ahead and... Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull it up. We'll listen to that first, why not? So, uh, yeah. Opening act. This is not what I wanted to share, but... It's a little, uh, detour. It's uh, something we can listen to as a... It's a bit of an opening act, if you will. A little prequel to the special. So yes, uh, those of you who've uh, been following me for a very long time are already familiar with the song, but I might as well show off its uh, shiny new audio coat of paint. A little improvement here and there. So, let's not fuck around anymore. Allow me to show you the brand new, well, not brand new, the sort of new, sort of uh, old... I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Fuck it. It's a remaster of Hajime Hos. Shibana fucking Tiger. Fucking daily offering. Let's get it. So, oh, there you go. A lot cleaner, a lot more, uh... A little easier to tell what's going on in that one, I think. Uh, like I said, uh, last song was uh, sort of made in a rush. It, uh, did, uh, was a bit of a mess in some ways, so, uh... I'm glad I got the chance to mix it up. But, I think it's time for a bit of a confession. There was a reason I wanted to remaster that song. Because I'd been listening to it quite a bit recently, actually, because I needed to, for reference, for this project I'm about to show you. This project that I'm about to show you, this new song, harkens back to that one in a lot of ways. It's going to sound very familiar, especially playing them back to back. 
Because... Big reveal time. This is a song about one of Shimada's best friends, actually. That's right. That's supposed to be the closest I can come to saying it without saying it. So yeah, enough fucking around. This is a song about Seiryu Komatsu. And for those of you who don't know who that is, allow me to shout her out. No, I said S-O, not S-P. So yes. Seiryu Goddamn Komatsu. Just redebuted, and that was a kick-ass redebut. That said, the redebut was not the reason I wanted to write a song for her. I've actually been wanting to since I wrote that previous song almost a fucking year ago. However, uh, for multiple reasons between her hiatus, other VTubers taking my attention away, commission work taking my attention away. I just never had the uh, proper downtime for it. But, when she redebuted, and I was like, you know what, fuck it. It's not exactly now or never, but it's a good time for it. The best opportunity I'm going to get. As a matter of fact, I wanted to get this done, like, probably closer to a week ago. Like, before the Q&A stream last Sunday. Her first, uh, stream besides the re-debut. But, I just wanted to put more work into it than that. I wanted to make sure the song was something real special. And, I think it is. I could probably put even more time to do it, but the fact of the matter is, I have other things to do. I gotta move on a bit from this project. Maybe I'll give this the remaster treatment a year from now as well. As a matter of fact, I'm almost certainly going to. But, that's then. This is now. And now, it is time for me to stop fucking waffling and actually share the goddamn new song with you. How's that? If you are ready to hear the new song, type in chat, in all caps, FUCK THAT DOOR. FUCK THAT DOOR in the chat. I said, FUCK THAT DOOR. FUCK THAT DOOR. I don't see them in chat yet. Yes, that's right. FUCK THAT DOOR. FUCK THAT DOOR. FUCK THAT DOOR. Not in that way, Wizzle, come on. I said, it's time to say, FUCK THAT FUCKING DOOR. FUCK. That. Yes, exactly. Welcome to the stream idol there. Fuck that door. Fuck that. Yes. Yes, now I'm feeling it. Now I feel fucking great. Alright. I think I've kept you all waiting long enough. For the first time on the entire fucking internet, it is time for the world premiere of my song for Seiryu Tomatsu. Toma, Death Goddess of Doors. And that's the end of the song, because I'm not to loop. So, that was it. That was what I've been alluding to for the last little bit. That was Death Goddess of Doors. 
And uh, that's out of my that's out of my side to actually make that public. How's that? So yeah, that was a new song for it. Let's uh, let's hope she does flip out about it, because I actually worked on a brand new instrument on that one. So the koto sort of sounded familiar, especially to uh, those who were paying attention to the last song. But what uh, was new was that I used an instrument called a Taisho Koto, otherwise known as a Nagoya harp. A bit more of an obscure sort of instrument, more of a keyboard kind of instrument, but also a very distinctly Japanese instrument. It's only a little over 100, 110 years old, actually. It was invented in 1912. So, by instrument standards, it's relatively new, but it was still, uh... It hasn't really had time to really join the classic Japanese instrument lexicon, but I decided uh, I needed to differentiate this song from the previous one in a lot of ways. Because if you were paying attention to the riffs, they stayed pretty close to Shimada's song. But I figured that was the most obvious way to do it. I've never used that instrument in a song before, and I was like, fuck it, why not? That's how we'll differentiate Seryu's song from Shimada's. So yeah, I'm pretty proud of that one. Uh, another little uh, hint you may have noticed. Uh, you may have noticed that it was a bit of a sad boy yesterday, and that was because of the news the previous night about Trevor Sonata and the Black Dahlia murder, uh, who had uh, passed away yesterday night. It was a very big tragedy, and that band was very important to me, but uh, I'm not going to say how I paid tribute to them, but I did pay tribute to them in the song. I'll leave it a secret for now, but one part of the song was actually ripped almost directly from a Black Dahlia song. I'll leave it to your imagination what for now. Because again, uh, Black Dahlia was a band that was a massive influence on me in a lot of ways, and uh, I'm going to miss Mr. Sternod a lot. As will a lot of uh, fans of the band. And I figured that was the least I could do for him to... Uh, Pay tribute to him in whatever my next song was. And this was still a work in progress, so it was like, yeah, just made sense. So, yes, uh, with that premiere out of the way, I think I'm done for the night. I've, uh, had a bit of a stressful day at work, stressful day in the office. Uh, I need to prepare for my revenge on the narrator. I need to, uh, put the work into, uh, See my beloved Bucket on again. I will be back for her. You can rest a fucking shirt on that. But until that day... Until that day, take it easy. Until that day, I will... Try to take breaks where I can. I will, uh... Get things accomplished. Uh, I've got quite a bit to do over the next little while. But, you can rest assured, I'm not going to shirk from the challenge. I'm always down for it. So, that'll do it. Take it easy until we meet again, which will be, most likely be Monday. Because I said I was going to do the Saitib on Sunday, but I'm thinking Monday now. I want the weekend to myself a little more. So, that'll be it. Uh, I will see you all on Monday, uh. I'll try to have the schedule out by tomorrow. Keyword try. Those are a bit more of a pain in the ass to make than they look. But, yeah. Rest assured, uh, that's the plan for the week. More Stanley Parable and the SciTube. So basically a repeat of this week. Just in reverse order. So we'll see you then, but until then, it's time to look for who to raid. Let us see who's on. Let's see. Bat, Abby. Ah, uh, Spectessa, who just hit partner today. Charlotte Bear, Thief, Kane. Corpse, Tatsuri, Eggy. Afrufa, Nap. Let's see, uh... Maybe Rummy? I don't believe I've rated Rummy ever. 
Or maybe Sigrid and Bird. Haven't read of them either. Okay, so either Rummy or Sigrid and Bird. Rummy or Sigrid and Bird. I'm going to sit for a moment and think on that. Uh, Rummy's a great choice. Well, guess that's that then. We're rating Rummy tonight. So. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for hanging out. Glad you enjoyed the song. Time to share it with the wider public. But in the meantime, before I do that, I gotta go say hello to the boss. So yes, uh, have a good night. Take it easy. Let's go say hi to Remy. See ya. <laughs>